a boy. You be a really good boy for mom today while I'm at work? Oh, I knew you would. I knew you would be. We're really happy that our trees are still standing. There's a huge windstorm that came through here on the weekend. Remember that rainstorm I was telling you about, a thunderstorm? It was actually a lot worse than I thought it was. Uh, There's a lot of damage around here. They said there was tornado force winds. There was no tornado, but winds uh, uh, near like Winkler Morden, I believe, in places got up to 180 kilometers an hour or like 110, 120 miles an hour. And uh, just south of here, near a town called Grunthal, there was about six to eight telephone poles that literally snapped in half. They didn't get pushed over from the bottom. Halfway up the telephone pole, they, they snapped in half, however that works. The winds were pretty crazy. The uh, arena in a town west of here in Niverville, there's a sheet metal on the roof, right? And the sheet metal actually got ripped right off. The roof is still on it. The way they reported it in the news, everyone was like, oh no, the roof is gone. No, just like, you know, the sheet metal on the roof, I guess the wind caught it, ripped it right off, sent it out into the, the outdoor hockey rink. A couple of farmers, the tops of their silos on their dairy silos, if that's what you call them, uh, the, the roofs on the silos anyways got blown off. Uh, in some towns, they said that there was just trampolines flying all over the place. <laughs> Everyone's trampoline was getting caught in the wind and just getting blown around town. It was pretty intense. We didn't get the worst of it here. But we've been a little bit worried about our trees back here falling over. Because that one grew a little crooked because there used to be another tree right there, right? So that one sort of grew out away from it to give this one room. That one got cut down before we moved in. Now that one sort of grew up at a bit of an angle. And I'm really worried that a good windstorm is going to knock it over that way and it's going to hit all three of these houses. And this one's not the healthiest and that one in there is actually dead. We need to get rid of that one ASAP. So we really don't want these trees falling on our house or anyone else's houses here or any of these, you know, spider web of wires that we have in our backyard here. Because nobody around here uh, apparently has underground power wires set up. So we really don't want them falling on our house or anyone else's house around here. And we got like a spider web of wires back here because uh, for one reason or another that I am unaware of, nobody in this block here or this area has underground power wires. I always, when, I, when we're building the house and our old house, my thought is always put the wires from the pole and the transformer underground to the house. That way they're out of the way and they're not hanging over our property like this, right? But you know, this is a bit of an older neighborhood, I guess. And it is more expensive to go underground and maybe there's reasons they couldn't go underground. Maybe, maybe there's a, a good reason for it. But anyways, it's all overground like that. And any tree that falls down here could potentially take out everybody's power in this little corner. And that would not be cool. Those are some big trees. I think I'm gonna take all three of them down and we're gonna plant new ones. And they're not going to be pine trees because these pine trees, they, they drop so many uh, uh, pine cones in our yard as well. So, yeah, we'll worry about that as soon as we can. I'll have to hire somebody uh, to come take down that dead one. That's going to be uh, a little tricky. Chevy, Chevy, who likes the butt scratches? Everybody likes the butt scratches, right? Good boy. Hey, hey, you going to be a good boy today? You gonna be a good boy today? How good? How good? So good you can't even speak of it. That's really good. Yeah, that's really good. So a lot of the time uh, where I get my motivation to keep vlogging every day or as much as I can is by watching other people who do the same thing. And obviously I watch people like uh, Troy and Angie on Beyond 1031, uh, Charles Trippy. Uh, I used to watch uh, Shea Carl when they used to make daily videos as well. They're a little bit of a different style than I make though, but you know, I'd like to take that energy and sort of put it into my day as well. It would make me feel better. And I want to make other people watching my videos feel better as well. So I like to watch other people uh, to sort of get encouraged, right? So my question to you right now is, do you watch any vloggers? They don't have to be truckers. Most of the vloggers I watch, if not all of them, are not truckers. I don't, I don't watch a lot of trucking content. I already 
am around trucks every day, all day, but it doesn't matter. Uh, is there anybody you know who makes like daily vlogs or almost daily vlogs? Like I don't technically do daily because I do miss a day here and there, usually one or two a week. Uh, I try to do Monday to Friday and some on the weekend. But uh, I'm looking for other vloggers to get encouragement from and uh, to be able to watch their content and uh, uh, get a little bit of inspiration, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So let me know down below in the comment section, who are your favorite vloggers, other than me, obviously. <laughs> who are some vloggers that you watch regularly and that really encourage you and make you feel good about the day? Oh yes, stretch it out, stretch it out. Morning, girl. Let's Check your fluids real quick here. Do a pre-trip. Grab our roll tight. We gotta grab a flatbed roll tight. And like I said, I gotta be in Toulon at noon. We got lots of time. Tell me you're feeling good. Come on. Yep. It's gone down a twitch. Just a little twitch since the service. Burning just a tiny little bit. Almost not even noticeable, but I notice. I pay attention to the truck I drive. I want it to last. There we go, two of those are going to Arkansas, one's going, no, two of them are going to Arkansas, two of them are going to Georgia. days would be miserable but alas hey hey ho, ho. we have the roll tights saves me a lot of effort energy Of this extra strap as well. I think I've told you before. Right? I'd usually pin behind the uh, behind the strap here. But since it's all just staying inside the trailer, you can just put it there, and it's not going anywhere. Coffee. I've got my load. I've 
I've got my eyeballs, I've got my shades. See, one of the reasons I had to buy separate shades, because uh, these ones, the air would get in around here, and it would dry out my eyes on the highway very quickly, and then that's dangerous. Also, the bugs can get in. You don't want a bug to like get in your eye. And uh, these, if I turn my head on the highway, the wind would catch in here and just like, exactly like that, blow them off. So you don't want that. Okay, I just stopped here for a coffee. And a little bit of show and tell. <laughs> I'm excited. I don't know if you've noticed or not yet. I have a feeling there's going to be uh, several moto vlogs in our future. Let's keep our fingers crossed and hope for next weekend. But uh, if it doesn't work out, uh, it'll happen. It'll happen. You can't rush things. I want them to make sure it's uh, good, good to go, right? Safety inspection, make sure that everything's working well. I know it's getting a new front tire and uh, new oil in the forks. I think we talked about this yesterday. How many of you guys ride? What kind of bike do you ride? Uh, let me know down below in the comment section. What, what kind of bike, what size, what model, what year? And do you live around here? Do you guys go riding regularly? Maybe we can go riding together. My favorite intersection. We should come up with a name for this intersection so you guys know what I'm talking about every time. We'll just call it the blind corner. Keep it simple. You know what I'm talking about. The corner where you're blind in both directions. And then when an opening comes like this, you just sort of gotta send it and hope for the best. No, nope, we're gonna wait. Uh, coming there, a couple of vehicles coming there now. Okay. After this guy, we're gonna. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Yep, yep. Oh, oh. Just gotta send it. Hope for the best. Put the hazards on. Until tomorrow, eh? I'm gonna go do some more trucking tomorrow. Apparently I gotta go up to Arburg again tomorrow. Lots of stuff heading out of there. So the freight I picked up today, like I said, going to Oklahoma and Georgia. Someone's gonna really enjoy that trip. Though it's probably so hot down there right now, it's probably nuts. Let me put you guys in a mount, one sec. Much better, much better. Now I can focus on not backing into anything. Don't want to hit my truck. Don't want to hit that tire that's in the ditch over there for some reason. I don't really know why it's there, but you can't even see it right now. But it's there. So don't back into it. <laughs> Diesel. Chevy. Here they are. Diesel, I'm in here. Oh, yeah, you are. Hello. What are you doing here? He's my room. My room. Chevy. Do you enjoy the movie? We watched a Disney movie tonight. We watched uh, what's it called? Raya and the Last Dragon. It's a new Disney movie. We really liked it. It was original, it was uh, wholesome, and really well put together. We really enjoyed it. That's what we did with our evening today. Not too much. And now it's time for bed again, because tomorrow we gotta do it all over again. And uh, see what happens. In the morning I'm gonna pick up Dad's trailer and pull it to work with me just in case the motorcycle is ready uh, because if it is ready on a trailer at home uh, I don't know how long it's going to take the shop to safety it uh, they're waiting for some parts, they're waiting for that front tire so if it does come in tomorrow, it shouldn't take long I mean if they're done by tomorrow and I'm able to take it home tomorrow then at least I have the trailer because uh, I, I can't ride it back because then my pickup stays out there 
and I want to have them both here. So I'll, I'll go pick up Dad's trailer first thing tomorrow morning with you guys. And uh, if it's not ready, whatever, that's fine. So we pulled the trailer back and forth for no reason for one day. We'll do it again the next day and the next until it's ready and then at least I'm prepared. I don't want to leave Dad's trailer at work, though I'm sure that wouldn't be a problem. Maybe I'll ask Dad if I can do that. If it's not ready, I'll just leave the trailer there. And if work doesn't mind, I don't, I don't think they'll mind if it's there for a couple of days, but I'll ask and make sure. And, uh, because it's in a fenced yard, it'll be safer there, actually. Maybe that's what we'll do. And then at least when the bike's ready, yeah, because it's being safety just down the road from, like, close to, like, the south end of the city. So it's not too far away. It's closer to work than here, anyway. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out tomorrow. That's, that's what the plans are for tomorrow morning. Thanks for hanging out with me today, though. Another day in the books tomorrow. Let's do it again. Meet me right here. Don't forget to subscribe. And don't forget to hit that like button. It really does help me out a lot. I'll talk to you tomorrow.